Hey everyone! In this episode, I will walk you through using our GraphQL client Strawberry Shake when you want to grab some data from another GraphQL server. Essentially, if you're fetching data from another GraphQL server and you're sitting in another web server. This also works if you're using consoles. So why is it different from using Strawberry Shake in Blazor? If you watched my video on getting started with GraphQL in Blazor, you know that there is a store involved in Strawberry Shake. So we are essentially caching data for the user that is just using our app. And this allows us for a reactive client. But in a server-to-server -server communication, this is not what we want because we would leak state from one user to another. But fear not, for this, we created a server-to-server -server profile. Before we get started, let me remind you that we are running workshops at NDC conferences throughout the year. So if you are interested in learning all about GraphQL on the .NET platform and beyond, like using Relay in combination with Hot Chocolate or Maui in combination with Hot Chocolate, then check out our workshops and head over to the NDC Conferences websites. With that, let's get started. Okay, so I have an empty VS Code here as always, and we wanna create a simple REST service here that fetches from our crypto GraphQL endpoint. So the first thing we should do is create this new web application. So .NET new web, which will create us an empty uh, minimal API project. And with this in place, let's have a look what it does. So our program CS as far as of now is really empty. We just have this simple map get here, which just returns hello world. So what we want to do is introduce a new route that gets in a symbol for a cryptocurrency. And we use this symbol as an argument to fetch the information about this cryptocurrency. For instance, the price. Um, at this point, let me just repeat the symbol here. And let's test our REST endpoint because I'm not doing a lot of REST these days. So I'm doing .NET Watch. And then let's copy this URL and paste it in Chrome. Let me zoom that a bit. Let's take 200. And then we pass in a symbol, for instance, the Bitcoin. Again, let me zoom that. Okay. So you can see at the moment, we're just passing through the symbol. Fortunately, we have this nice crypto GraphQL API where we want to fetch our data from. So in order to do that, we're going to get a new console window here, and then we want to add Strawberry Shake. So before we can add Strawberry Shake, we need to add our tooling so we can initialize our GraphQL client here. So the first thing to do is creating a new tool manifest. And the tool manifest is just a registry for the tooling we want to use with our project here. So I'm going to add .NET tool install, the Strawberry Shake tools, and I'm using at this point the Previo 47 of version 13. There might be a newer version when you watch this video. So go for the newest. Okay, with that, you can see my tooling is installed, and that means I can use it. So I'm going to initialize our GraphQL client here. And I'm using our crypto GraphQL workshop backend. And uh, I want to put this in the root because we don't have a lot of clients here. Okay, so I named our client. This n parameter here is the name of our client. You will see what this is about when we actually use a client in our code. Okay, with this, we just have a couple of files here. It's the schema.graphql and the schema extension.graphql, which essentially is the schema. So we can compile our GraphQL queries against that schema. And then we have our configuration file here that has a couple of other things in it. The next thing we need to do is introduce a GraphQL query. And we call that get asset by symbol here dot graphql and then we just write our graphql query get asset by symbol let's just paste that in and then we are taking the asset by symbol root fields to fetch our data and let me put some more fields in here symbol and we want the latest price okay that's it 
but we need a path in the symbol still. So we could just say symbol and then pass in the Bitcoin here, which would be kind of static. Or we introduce a new variable in our operation here. Let's call that symbol and say that is a string and this string is non-nullable, so it has to be specified. And then we can take that variable and pass it through our field argument. And with this, we are almost done here. Our query would work, but our client still doesn't generate. And that's because we haven't added the strawberry shake profile that we want to use. So we are going to add a new GraphQL package here, and we're going to use the package strawberry shake server. That's the server to server profile or the console profile. And again, we are using the preview 47 here. Let's add that. Okay, with this, we have a new package in here. You can see that. And it also now will generate us a client. So let's see if .NET Watch already generated us a client. If the client would already be generated, we should have it here at our fingertips to inject it. So, so we should have an add crypto client. Yeah, so the .NET Watch worked. It generated us the client because we changed the project and that kicked in a new build and that uh, produced the client. Okay, so we are adding the crypto client that we just created here to our services. And then we tell our crypto client also how to connect to the GraphQL backend. In this case, we are using HTTP because we are only doing simple fetches. And beneath that actually, is just a wrapper to the HTTP client factory. You could also use the HTTP client factory directly or even intercept through another delegate here, the client builder. We did that so you don't have to deal with constants for the client. Next thing we wanna build out this little method here for our REST service. Let's introduce some braces so we can put some more complex stuff in here. We just reformat that because I think we need a couple more arguments into that. So we have it reformatted. Let's put the actual logic in here. So what we need now is to be able to execute this get assets by symbol operation. And we're going to do that by injecting something from our services. So we do from services and let me just import that or let's first complete that and then I import the namespaces. The next thing we need to do is get our assets, get asset by symbol query. And let's call it query. That's our operation here. And we're going to import that from server to server. And we're going to import this from MVC namespace. Okay, with this, we have uh, these two guys. We could now resolve our pricing information for that asset. But we also should inject another thing here, and that's the cancellation token in case the request is canceled. Okay, with these three things, we can now build our, I would say resolver, but it's not a resolver. It's this REST thingy. Let's call query here. And you can see we have an execute here. If you watched my episode on doing GraphQL with Blazor, we never use something like execute. We would maybe watch something, observe something, but this execute actually is meant for the server to server profile. Since we don't observe any state here, we don't have state. So we go straight to our GraphQL backend and fetch the data. And into that, we pass in our symbol and the variable here from my GraphQL operation translated to a parameter in my execute method. So I can pass in the symbol here and then I can pass through the cancellation token from my HTTP context. So with this, let's await it. So we need an async method and then we, we await our result here. And this result is the GraphQL result. We could just path it through, but that would make sense. Uh, and there are a couple of helper things on that we don't actually need in our REST response. What we're going to do here is say that we want to guarantee that our result has no errors. 
to if there are no errors, otherwise it will throw in the exception. And then we know that the result actually has some data. This is from the GraphQL response structure. But we also know that this result is not null because there are no errors on it. So this result has a value. And then we can just straight return the asset by symbol result here. Let's try that out. It should already give us everything we want. Okay, reload. So we changed too much. So hot reload wasn't able to get all the changes. So it wants to rebuild fully. We've done that. Let's go to our Chrome browser and fetch the data again. And you can see now we are fetching from our GraphQL server some data and we are relaying it through REST. So this is how you can use Strawberry Shake in your backend application to fetch something from a GraphQL server. This could maybe be for something like using the GitHub GraphQL server or maybe you have some GraphQL infrastructure somewhere else or some external GraphQL infrastructure that you want to integrate even in REST or that you want to integrate into another GraphQL server. And with this, we are already at the end. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below our video. See you next time.